Hi there. Uh, it's been a little while since I put a video on, and uh, like to kind of catch up a bit and let people who have subscribed see what's happening. I'm in Texas at the minute, West Texas, and yeah, the world's changed a bit. Seems like uh, coronavirus. Sick listening to it, but it's a part of our lives now, so I guess I'll need to pay attention to that. But uh, don't like it. <laughs> uh, plus, the Russians are messing about with the oil price here and try to put everybody else out of business. So, but we're still here, still running loads, still hauling sand, and it's hard to see any difference in Texas other than the fact that fuel costs are a dollar a gallon cheaper than they were this time last year. So that's only a good thing for us short term. Historically, when the fuel prices are down, it's a disastrous thing for the trucking industry, but um, no, it's okay at the minute. Okay, short term, yeah. Um, I've been here now for four weeks, and I'm glad we came. At the time, the rates had gone to the toilet, uh, as far as over the road goes, but... Mm, is this the best move I've ever made? It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Really hard to tell because I would have liked to have started up a coach company in London this year. Sure glad I never done that. No schools, no school runs, no school trips, no sporting events, no music events. You basically built a business, I think. You're just starting up. So. We've still got work, we're still running, and the sand has been uh, a bit sketchy to start with, but the week before last was a good week, the week, last week was a good week, this week's not been a bad start, other than the fact that it's been wet and made for Texas mud, there's nothing like it, it's like red grease, glue, grease, your feet stick to it, you you know, when you get out the truck to walk to the kiosk to hand your paperwork in, you know, you look like you're a fat ice skater that doesn't have a clue what they're doing. It's just, you're bending over, trying <laughs> try to undo the boxes and you're slipping backwards and slipping forwards and holding on to stuff and everything you touch is covered in mud. And I'm gonna, hopefully Tommy can edit in here. We'll get a little video that will show you what happened uh, when uh, our new driver took a little turn uh, it was a black, dirty, wet, foggy night, you know, you couldn't see, and uh, yeah, there's no no road signs out here, so he missed the, the turning and took another one to turn around and ended up getting the truck bogged down, so we had to find some nice, kind farmer guy with his tractor to drag us out, so um, you'll see, hopefully, in the video what we've got edited in here. Um, so that's, uh, that's... Texas and since then since we made the decision to come here the Russians have been messing about with the price of oil and it's down below $30 a barrel today which uh, long term don't know what that holds stock market down and it seems like the only thing you would do to make money right now is to haul groceries to the stores or toilet paper if you can freaking get it and eggs, uh, almost getting to the stage now if you'll need to have an armed guard carrying a load of food, a load of eggs to a supermarket. Uh, Paul, we st he stuck the reefer that we had here behind him and he's out. He, we sent him away from the oil field and he is currently in Houston. Took a load of meat down there from the meat producers in Texas here and picked up a load of bottled water. He's gonna be hauling it up to Salt Lake and switching trailers. The trailers we had were just rented We've only got one left, and I thought I did the right thing. Who knows what the right thing is, you know, you do. My friend Bob used to say, if you do one thing and it works out, you're a hero. If you do the same thing and it doesn't work out, you're an idiot for trying. So this video's a bit sketchy jumping around, but life has been a bit sketchy right now jumping around. So, so our green truck with Paul in it is over the road for the minute with the rented reefer. He's gonna get to Idaho Falls, hopefully by Thursday night, Friday morning and switch that trailer out for one that we're going to buy 
It's the one that we're going to buy is a 2016 model, so California compliant. It's the way to go forward. Actually, cheaper to buy it than it is to rent it, monthly payment wise, and then it's yours at the end of three years, and it's three years, four years new. So makes sense in every direction. So getting rid of those trailers and coming to the oil field will benefit us in that if we go back over the road, we'll be hauling with more modern equipment. Uh, yellow truck, she's plowing through. Really just a great machine. Uh, <laughs> don't know how it, it just, it's just indestructible. It goes well. And, it's making money. Uh, our young guy, he's driving it today uh, while Wes is in, uh, at home in Vegas. Vegas. Who knew, eh? Who would ever have suspected that the casinos and the strip would be closed at any time? All of them, you know. Strange days, but the rates are really, they've gone crazy for the over the road freight. So I'm sitting here today. Uh, the thing I don't like about oil field, I've mentioned this in previous videos, is that you sit here at the mercy of other people giving you loads. Paul phoned me this morning, hey, I'll be unloaded and I'm getting unloaded now, I'll be unloading an hour. And I'd been watching the loads on my phone and as soon as he was done, within 10 minutes I had the load booked, uh, the rate for confirmation to me and emailed to him. There you go, done. He's the way to pick it up now. That's what I miss. I miss that. Um, I'd like to, I've always said I'd like to have a couple of trucks here and a couple going over the road and uh, it's probably convenient for me to be here because there's times when there's not a lot happening like this where I can do the admin and stuff like that but uh, it sure sucks sitting in the sidelines uh, while everybody else is having, you know, making hay. I suppose I'm making it as well but uh, loads I saw we could not get anywhere near five grand coming out of Idaho going to Florida then the small one they're over six uh, there are loads everywhere yesterday there were 2,000 loads in Atlanta uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here looking out the window waiting for my phone to go blink we got a load but uh, I think I'd, we're, I think I'd like to get another truck and have four two here two over the road I'd be quite balanced at that but a steady cash flow I've missed the steady cash flow uh, our insurance was up for renewal and for some reason I get nervous at the renewal here and I don't want trucks to be all over the road and uh, have anything be untoward happen because I never had any claims last year against my insurance drivers I all get you know no tickets I get a couple of speeding tickets in a pickup truck but um, nothing that was going to affect my driving ability really uh, at the age I'm at but for some reason my insurance went up from 36 to 51,000 this year for three trucks that's a lot and so everybody and that was the cheapest one it was the best one I wanted but uh, because we brought on a newer driver um, it's quite I don't know how they work it but they said you can add the driver and it won't cost you anymore but when it comes time for renewal boy I'll tell you what they sure went at it and then my broker told me that no insurance has gone up this year so if your insurance is uh, coming up for renewal mind how you go there um, and I was nervous that mine was going to be super high and so I went to everything in Texas at the time get my trailers back, be in Texas, consolidate a bit, and then if the insurance was going to be huge, uh, which it shouldn't have been, you know, 60, 70, 80 grand or something like that, I was just going to lease on to somebody down here uh, and use their insurance. But for some reason, no claims has gone up. So if you've got that coming up, watch out for it. Um, so here we sit. Two, and two here, the silver truck has given his grief, it's been off the road for three weeks and then it was on the road, it's been off the road and on the road and it's got a fuel problem and it was all set to get 10 grand worth of work done to it from a shop that we trust and we like and uh, because they never had an ASE certified mechanic 
you know, they can rebuild anything from 1970s 359 peaks and rebuild them all. And But because they didn't have a certificate, we had to get it towed to another garage and then they changed the fuel filter on it and bled it up and said, there you go, that's it, good to go. I picked it up Friday. By Saturday, I did 80 miles and then same with fueling problems. Uh, so uh, it keeps bringing up codes and death codes and so it's come back in today. That's the third, fourth time in as many weeks. So I'm about ready to, yeah, that's going to come to a sticky end, that girl. If it doesn't shape up and fly straight, it'll not be here. So, uh, but it's a difficult time. I just don't know what to be at. Um, the coronavirus, it doesn't suit people. Obviously, it doesn't suit them, but it really is against everything that an ambitious person wants to do. Nobody, nobody that's got a bit of ambition wants to be told, well, sit tight, consolidate, don't do this, don't do that. I just think, you know what? The world's gonna go around. We're all gonna get up tomorrow. The stock market, eh, is it up or is it down? And I don't mean this to people who've got pensions and stuff, but who cares? It's, it will affect your pension probably, but you know, uh, that's maybe a lesson to those who are my age and you know, if you get a chance of buying property and rent it out to somebody, that that's maybe a way to go. But um, the stock market is only, in my opinion, this is only me, truck driver. My opinion is that the stock market, it goes up and it goes down. It's only when you decide to cash out that it affects you. So if you spent 10 grand and it's gone up to 80 grand and then it's come when you're thinking, well, I've got 80 grand there, I'll just keep it in. And then it goes back down to 60. You think you've lost 20. Well, you haven't because you only put 10 in to start with. Um, and it is a gamble, you know, um, but only when you cash out. So if you've got it, keep it till it goes back up. It always comes back up. Property prices came down in 2008. Up until a month ago, they were flying high, you know, back higher than they were. So when things are low, if you can't avoid selling it out, then I, don't, I think that's what you should do is to keep it. <laughs> Stock advice from me. No, am I kidding? Um, but that's just my thoughts. It's, it's all false. You can have a great company making a great product that everybody needs, but because people want dividends, Wall Street controls it and affects it. So life is going to go on because the other options kind of crap you know um but i just think that we need to get on with life as soon as we can and make things happen and i just don't like being in a standby a standstill i'm on standby the new but i just don't like things being at a standstill i like to be making things move forward so in light of that i might grab a cheap truck and have it sit in the oil field here and take the silver one once it's repaired and just put miles on it go get another reefer and two of us run over the road two of us in the oil field because i think i think the oil field will be all right you know i think the the oil will come back up because once the demand comes back um and this coronavirus thing's out the way because it will be out the way you know the, the other options not very good to have it here all the time you know i uh, imagine they will get a cure for it and imagine they will get a vaccine for it and it'll go away and then as soon as it goes away hopefully it goes away quick but as soon as it does confidence will be restored in the markets and people will be want to get after it again and i think they'll go after it quickly i know i will but that may be foolishness in my part um so that's that's kind of the update i'm in the oil field with uh waiting for west to come back we new drivers here um I haven't spoke to him about putting his name on the YouTube, so I just call him, referred to him as New Driver. Um, need to get a shave, but I'm just marking time here. Um, probably going to put a truck over the road. I, I, that's my gut is pulling me that way, but uh, once everybody's got their shelves filled up, um, do you want to be left with more commitments? Or does you, do you want to? consolidate you know if I go with everybody else's opinion they say consolidate consolidate 
sit tight and uh, my guts are wanting to go freaking go get more <laughs> get out of it fill it you know go buy a truck and run it and put one of these over the road and what you make over the road will pay for your little cheap truck that you're gonna buy you know so uh, but it seems to be a bit of a feast right now for loads and for rates and yeah um, but uh, keep looking around me thinking you know I am usually the guy who will have spent a fortune or borrowed a fortune and spent a fortune and invested heavily into something and you know I've always thought when my ship comes in I'll be standing there at the airport with a plane ticket and my ship will be sitting somewhere else and I'll miss it but um, strangely enough I find myself in a position here in the trucking that the trucks I've got something everybody needs everybody wants the stuff food's got to go you know shelves are being empty Amazon's going nuts for hiring people and shifting stuff and I've just got a new load request come up on my screen there see how your attitude changes when you've got work I'm very fortunate to be working still I'm very fortunate that our household overheads are low and we've got a little company that we can consolidate and run hard on and uh, yeah I uh, consider myself very blessed none of my family's got this virus around yet and I hope that continues to be the case but uh, if you do get it, I wish you all the best and uh, take care out there, everybody. Um, I find myself, you know, I'm a dirty bugger when it comes to personal hygiene, as you can probably see in the videos. And, uh, you know, my, my, <laughs> my Twix fell off my knee and landed on the floor and it was all dusty and I just thought, I'm still eating that. Up you come and ate it. And... Uh, I would eat my lunch without washing my hands. If somebody handed me a sweet, I would put it in my mouth. But now I find myself, uh, I shouldn't really say this, but I was in McDonald's today and some, the, all the chairs and everything's t chained off and I went in there and uh, some people that didn't look that clean come in and I thought, mm, I need to get away for you and get back out again. Uh, I borrowed a pen to sign a, uh, the thing for paying the hotel here and I thought how many people have you touched that pen and then you end up getting a wee bit of germaphobe and then when you go into a shop and you've got to push the keypad you know put in your pin number how many fingers are touching that keypad and all these wee things go through your brain and you start thinking I'm glad I grew up in a generation where we went out the back door down the bun and played in the bun lifted rocks played with minties, minnows and all that stuff when you were younger and got a bit of an immunity, immune system built up so I think for the most of my generation we should be quite healthy and because uh, uh, you grew up in, uh, I want to say non-sanitary but um, we were only treated like wimps you know you just go out and play out the back door and play in dirt and you know push your toy cars through the dirt all that stuff, I think that builds a bit of immunity on you rather than being man be pammy and everybody running after you with a, a wet wipe constantly. So, but uh, who knows? I'm not a doctor, I'm not a stockbroker. I better accept my load here, go do it, make a buck, and try and get some money in the table. So, hope you like the video. Uh, sorry it's been so long, but uh, I've had to concentrate on this, and it's been a very, very difficult time for us. Uh, renewing my insurance, big deposits, just juggling money and juggling work and getting things on the right position has been very, very taxing for me. Two migraines, one yesterday, one the day before, but uh, we're getting there. And we've got an opportunity to make a dollar and keep ourselves right. And uh, I just really hope that everybody who's less fortunate, say my prayers for you. Um, not that I'm super fortunate, but I've still got a way to make some grocery money, so. And my heart goes out to people who are in a difficult time. So all the best to you and uh, good times are ahead. Remember, the man who never gives up can never be beaten. See ya.